Well, good morning, friends. Happy Easter. Today is indeed the third Sunday in Easter, a 50-day celebration. So yes, it is still appropriate to say Happy Easter. If you have been following our Easter journey thus far, you may have noticed a pattern unfolding, a lot of flip-flopping between the Gospel of Mark and the Gospel of John. And the reason for that is uh, this year in the lectionary cycle, uh, we do that because Mark is so short and it's the shortest gospel we have. And so John is inserted as filler material. Um, But today we are making a turn to hear a very different post-resurrection story from the gospel of Luke, where the disciples are still sequestered in fear Jesus shows up, and they think they are seeing a ghost. I wonder what that could mean for our lives today, and how we live an Easter faith in the world. It's going to be a great Sunday as we explore this together. So let's take a moment to settle into our spaces, whether we are on site or online, and prepare our hearts once more for worship. Will you please join me in our Easter acclamation? Alleluia, Christ is risen. risen Alleluia, Alleluia, Christ is risen. risen Alleluia, Alleluia, Christ is risen. risen Our opening hymn this morning is number 246 in the hymnal, Christ is Alive. Let us rise in body or spirit as we join together in singing. Christ 
Christ is alive, let Christians sing. The cross stands empty to the sky. Let streets and homes with praises ring. Love drowned in death shall never die. Christ is alive, no longer bound to distant years in Palestine, but saving, healing here and now, and touching every place and time. In every insult, rift, and war, where color, scorn, or wealth divide, Christ suffers still, yet loves the more, and lives where even hope has died. Women and men in age and youth can feel the Spirit, hear the call, and find the way, the life, the truth revealed in Jesus freed for all. Christ is alive and comes to bring good news to this and every age, till earth and sky and ocean ring with joy, with justice, love, and praise. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Full, fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'm going to come up here and see if you can help me, Chad. If you could kind of hold this. Can everyone hear me okay? Okay, let's go ahead and open it. How many people here had breakfast this morning? Guess what? I didn't have breakfast because I was kind of busy, so I'm hungry. I need some lunch. So I need if you guys can help me here. If I held up this right here, what is that? What is it? Piece of cheese. So what do you think I'm going to have for lunch? Cheese, you know what, I was thinking cheese sounds pretty good, but it's not quite there. So what would happen if I grabbed a couple pieces of bread? What am I going to have? A cheese sandwich. Close, close. How about some butter? Who likes butter on their sandwich? Yeah? but not quite there. This will help. I think I heard the answer from someone. What happens if I held up a frying pan? Uh-huh, what am I gonna have? Grilled cheese, right but wrong. Right but wrong. What happens if I held that up? Does that make any sense? How about if I held up that. Okay, so what am I having? Grilled cheese and tomato soup. Oh, I love grilled cheese and tomato soup. So you know what? Kind of hard to figure out, wasn't it? As I kept giving you clues. Kind of hard to figure out. And that's what our gospel lesson is about today. You see, Jesus, 
after he was resurrected, he came back to the disciples. And he was with the disciples, and they were scared. They were scared because they weren't really sure what was going on. So you know what Jesus did? Just like my grilled cheese and tomato soup story, he did four things. He said, one, it's me. Look at the scars and let's have supper together. And then two, he said, remember the Bible. Everything you've seen is in the Bible. It's just telling what was going to happen. It's happened. Number three, since I'm back, it means salvation. It means mankind's sins can be forgiven. And number four, now that I told you the whole story and you understand, go tell everyone else. Go tell everyone else. So my funny little grilled cheese and tomato soup was meant to just show what I think the disciples were going through. They had all the bits and pieces, and they understood, and they'd read the Bible, and they'd lived with Jesus. They saw the miracles. They saw the death. They saw the resurrection. But until God, in his timing, said, now let's put it all together, then he said, now that you understand, go tell people. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, your Son, your love, our salvation, we understand the story. Please help us to go tell. Amen. Well, I have some very exciting news today. Uh, What uh, we've called in the past Faith Friends or Sunday School is back available for children fifth grade and under, and we have renamed it Children's Church. So this is a time for you to go and learn and worship, and I know it's going to be a blessed time for you. So our children fifth grade and under are dismissed for Children's Church. Today's first scripture is taken from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Fellow Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and tell and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks to be to God. God, be gracious, hear my prayer, and answer when I cry. You give me hope in my distress, 
you will not pass me by. How long, O oh God, will liars boast while I am smeared with shame? Come set your faithful servant free, I call upon your name. When terror wakes me from my dreams and shakes me through and through, teach me to pray with confidence and put my trust in you. Some fear that you will not provide, they cry, show us your face. But you have satisfied my heart with goodness, joy, and grace. Now lay me down to sleep in peace, in safety let me rest. O oh God, within your loving care, I am forever blessed. Today's second scripture reading is taken from 1 John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or know him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O God. While the disciples were talking about what Clopas and the other disciple had told them, Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? 
And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Yet for all their joy, they were still disbelieving and wondering. And he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. The beloved spiritual writer, contemplative, theologian, Trappist monk, and Kentuckian, Thomas Merton once said, if the you of today does not consider the you of five years ago to be a heretic, then you aren't growing spiritually. As I examine my own spiritual life and growth, I frequently turn to Merton's quote as a litmus test. Sometimes it hits the nail right on the head, defining me to a fault. At other times, it could not be more far off, causing me to examine and reevaluate my spiritual growth in different ways. As we grow as human beings, learning new truths and having new experiences of life, our spiritual lives and growth ought to reflect it. In my life and ministry, I have met individuals who, although perhaps good-hearted or well-intentioned, have allowed themselves to grow spiritually stagnant. What was once a vibrant, life-giving, fresh, flowing stream of water has become dammed up with closed-mindedness and closed-heartedness alike. Their puritanical pond scum grows and smells really bad. I look at them with a degree of sadness as the consequences of their choices, often moored in fearfulness, yields disgusting results. I resort to wonder. I wonder what happened to cause such a travesty. How can these individuals know what they know, experience what they have experienced, lived the life they have lived, and yet be so closed-minded and closed-hearted. Have any of you ever met anyone like that? Yeah. I suppose, in a way, if we are being truthful when, with ourselves, we can all be like that. And apparently, Jesus' disciples could be too. If we can identify a common theme in our readings throughout this Easter season thus far, then it has to be the theme of fear. Today, once again, we meet the disciples enclosed in an undisclosed location. They are behind locked, dead-bolted doors. Clopas and an uh, unnamed other disciple had bolted 
from Emmaus to Jerusalem, telling the disciples that Christ had appeared to them on the road to Emmaus, in their home, and at their table in the breaking of the bread. And as they were discussing these things, the risen Christ himself decides to join their party. None of the disciples believed it was really him. Instead, we are told they thought they were seeing a ghost. Go ahead and sign these folks up for ghost hunters on reality television. Now, we may laugh at them, But would we honestly be any better? We live in a world where people honestly believe they have seen Jesus appear to them on a piece of toast. Let's not hold humanity to a very high standard here. (laughs) Ghost or toast, take your pick. But Jesus does so much more than haunt them. He appears to them. Jesus may be recognized in the breaking of the bread, but certainly not in the burning of it. No, we are told Jesus opens their minds to understand the scriptures. Luke tells us Jesus opens the minds of the disciples so they could understand more fully God's saving works. Jesus opens their hearts to receive more fully the grace God makes available to them and to all. For the disciples to be in a living relationship with the living Christ... They had to open the doors to allow Clopas and the other disciple to enter, and thus Jesus too. They had to have their minds opened. They had to have their hearts opened. Open minds, open hearts, open doors. Sound familiar? It should. Since it has been the marketing strategy of the United Methodist Church for over a decade now, I say marketing strategy because really that's all it is, or at least it's all it has been. But in just over a week, delegation from across the United Methodist Church will gather for a much-awaited and much-anticipated general conference in Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, for those of you who may be new to or unfamiliar with the United Methodist Church, our general conference is the highest decision-making body in our denomination. Legislation is put forth that will be voted upon and enacted that impacts the life of all our churches as it is implemented through our Book of Discipline. And once more, the eyes of the world will be upon us to see what kind of witness we are going to have. The world will be watching and waiting to see what stances we will adopt as a denomination as to who is in and who is out. They will be anticipating whether harmful exclusionary language and its related policies will be dropped or not from our book of discipline. Will we continue to kick the can down the road as we have since 1972? Or will we maintain the punitive traditional plan that was enacted in 2019? Or will we finally become the inclusive and affirming church that so many among our millions of members desire us to become officially on paper? Will we make the front page of the New York Times yet again? Will it look the same as it did five years ago? Or will it look much more positive this time? 
Will we truly have open hearts, open minds, and open doors? Yes, moving from marketing strategy to a way of life may be, should be, on the horizon for the United Methodist Church. I join with many others in hoping and praying for it to be so. But open minds, open hearts, and open doors should also be a seal stamp on our own individual spiritual lives too. Our spirited openness allows us to see not only how Jesus appeared to the first disciples, but also how Jesus continues to appear in our lives today, calling us forward into new understandings of the God he is still revealing. God's revelation is still ongoing. Because Christ is alive, God's revelation is alive too. The question for us is, will we be open to receiving it? The author Christian Wyman powerfully reminds us, if you believe at 50 the same things you believed when you were 15, then you have not lived. Or you have denied the reality of your life. Faithfulness means always being humble enough to acknowledge that you haven't fully figured everything out. Faithfulness means being curious enough to evaluate the scholarship and arguments as they arise. Faithfulness means being honest enough to admit when you've gotten something wrong and when someone else does the hard work of walking this path. Faithfulness means that our mercy for them should be as wide as God's mercy for us all. It reminds me of a time when I was a college student trading for the ministry over a decade ago, as much as it pains me to say that. One of my favorite classes I took as a college student was a seminar-style course in modern theology. Doesn't that sound riveting? I loved it. I absorbed that course material like a sponge. And all was going well until I began to resonate with the modern theologians that my professor, Dr. Neil Anderson, was trying to refute as heretics. But for heretics, they certainly made a whole lot of sense to me. And at the end of the course, complete with my newfound theological understanding and knowledge, much of which I still hold to today, I remember Dr. Anderson lamenting at me. Well, I guess I failed as a professor. I smiled and I said to him, why would you ever say that? You taught me to read and study carefully. You taught me to think critically for myself. And I did. While I may have landed in a different place than you might have liked, while I hold a different perspective than you might have preferred, isn't that what theological education is all about? He nodded and said, you know, when you look at it that way, I guess I didn't fail after all. What I learned in modern theology still impacts my life and my ministry today. It impacts my spiritual life, the way I understand God, 
and the ways I believe God continues to reveal God's self in the world. But none of us need a theology to degree to learn that truth. All of us, we learn, we grow, we expand in our thinking. Our consciousness becomes more aware and raised. We open our minds to a vast, wide, life-giving mercy given to us from a loving God. And our openness in turn leads us into being a more faithful witness to Jesus Christ and the eternal life he has won for us. That's what an Easter faith is all about. So in conclusion, Jesus opened the minds of his disciples. And if we let him, he will open our minds too. Jesus opened the hearts of his disciples. And if we let him, he will open our hearts too. Jesus opened the doors of the disciples. And if we let him, he will open our doors too. And we will see him, not as a ghost, not on a piece of toast, but as a living, life-transforming presence. Amen. The hymn of the day is number 692 in the hymnal, Spirit, Open My Heart, a truly beautiful hymn set to the Irish folk tune, Wild Mountain Time. I invite us to rise in body or spirit and join together in singing our hymn of the day. Spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living. As you love, may I love in receiving and in giving. Spirit, open my heart. God, replace my stony heart with a heart that's kind and tender all my coldness and fear to your grace I now surrender spirit open then my heart to the joy and pain of living as you love me living and in giving spirit open my heart write your love upon my heart 
As my law, my goal, my story In each thought, word, and deed May my living bring you glory To the joy and pain of living As you love, may I love Receiving and in giving Spirit, open my heart May I weep with those who weep Share the joy of sister, brother in the welcome of Christ, may we welcome one another. Spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living as you love me. I love in receiving and in giving. Spirit, open my heart. Please be seated. We come now to our time of prayer, offering our prayers for this community and for the world and for those we are called to serve. We offer our prayers first in silence. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Risen Christ, make your love known to us. Lord Jesus Christ, the light of your love shines on, illuminating the places where you are present. As the bewildered disciples pondered the stories of your appearance, you penetrated the darkness of their fear and doubt with your word of peace. You showed them the appalling marks of evil pierced on your hands and your feet. You opened their minds to understand why you had to die to defeat such evil and death. Increase our understanding, we pray, and open our minds and hearts to receive you. Risen Christ, Make your love known to us. Bring to us, O God, the sense of your living presence as we go into this new week. Renew in us the faith you want us to have, the faith that is not afraid to reach out in your name and to share the treasure you have given us, that treasure which is greater than silver and gold. Lord, you know our hearts, you know our needs, and you know the hearts of those around us and their needs. We lift ourselves and them before you at this time. Risen Christ, make your love known to us. Lord, we specially hold before you today those in our faith community which we hold dear to our hearts. We remember especially Sandy, Carl, Doug, Don, and those we name in our hearts. Risen Christ, make your love known to us. Finally, O oh Lord, we ask that you would bless us here at Bethel United Methodist Church with vision for the future and reverence for the past. Guide us each day as we minister to one another 
and to a world for which you gave yourself. Help us each day to bear witness to your name and to do that which you would have us to do. We ask it through Christ Jesus, our Lord, at whose command and formed by whose teaching we pray together the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As we now continue our worship through the giving of our tithes and offerings, I have a handful of announcements that I'd like to share with you. First and foremost, just as Jesus ate in the presence of his disciples, so we are going to eat together the delicious carry-out orders that will be available in the FLC after service today. On the menu is Italian beef sandwiches, and yes, I understand that there will be jardinier to put on it, as God very well intended. <laughs> Potato salad and a brownie, and the cost for each meal is $7. Please note that uh, next Sunday as well, we will gather in the FLC after service to uh, do the work as a congregation of reimagining our community relationships and engagement. It'll be a pitch-in potluck meal. Uh, the church will be providing a baked potato bar with all of the accoutrement that go on baked potatoes. So you don't need to bring that, but feel free to bring delicious side dishes to accompany that baked potato bar. And we will be uh, discussing uh, how we can best engage with our community as Bethel United Methodist Church. Also this week, uh, you, many of you may have seen the email that went out from me regarding a church conference uh, that is called by our conference superintendent, Dr. Elise Fulbright, via Zoom this Thursday, April 18th at 6.30. This vote is to approve the sale of the parsonage, um, and this is required by the Book of Discipline and for our annual conference and district. Um, it is simply, now the parsonage for all intents and purposes has been sold and we look to close on the parsonage sometime next month, but we need to have that seal of approval from the congregation in order to do that. And um, these uh, meetings typically aren't very long. I've been through two of them before and um, all who are active members in good standing have a voice and a vote. And so that link will be sent out a bit later on in the week. Um, and if you are concerned about your membership status here at Bethel, you can reach out to the church office. Um, and if you have any questions about the church conference, you can see me and um, I will try and answer them as best I can. Finally, uh, Bethel uh, Needleworkers will be teaching a crochet class on Saturday, May 4th from 10 to noon and Saturday, June 1st, also from 10 to noon. So if you would like to uh, join them in that ministry, please mark your calendars for that. Whew, I think that's enough for one morning. Let us walk in love as Christ is love who gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God to reveal God's love for us and who is still revealing God's love today. Will our ushers please come forward to receive this morning's offering.
precious Lord, lead me home. Please stand and join us in singing, Be Not Afraid. Be not afraid, we sing out for joy, Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, alleluia. Risen and rising Christ, as you appear to the disciples so long ago, appear to us in our fears. Open our minds, open our hearts, open our doors, so that we may be your witnesses in this place and in the world. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is To God Be the Glory. As we give glory to God today, who opened the life gate that all may go in, we remain standing and join together in singing. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Great things he has taught us, great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. As we go forth into a new week, receive this benediction. May the risen Christ meet you on your road, in your fears, in your rooms, and at your tables, opening your hearts, your minds, and your doors to receive all that he has to give you in all of the people you will meet, in all the life that you will live, in all of the hearts 
that will be opened because of you and your witness to his name. Go in peace. You are sent. Amen.